Acceleration. The acceleration vector pretty much continues what we did with the velocity vector. With the velocity vector, we broke it into an x, y, and z component. Here's your average acceleration. It looks almost the same as the average velocity, except for with the average velocity, it was displacement divided by change in time. Here, acceleration is a change in velocity, it's a function of time. Okay? For the instantaneous acceleration, we have dv dt, where this is the derivative with respect to time of the velocity. So that would be dx dt dy, I'm sorry, dv x dt, dv y dt, and dv z dt. Now again, What's nice about this chapter is we deal mostly with projectile motion. So almost always the acceleration in the x direction is going to be zero. Whereas the acceleration in the y direction is going to be due to gravity, it's going to be the negative y direction. So again, we can treat our x and y components independently of one another and solve them separately. What one is doing really has no impact on what the other one is doing. So we never have to write out the acceleration vector completely. In fact, the acceleration vector not only is constant, which means there's no difference between average and instantaneous, but it's also almost always completely in the y direction. So in terms of the SI units, nothing has changed. Displacement is still meters. Any velocity is still meters per second. Acceleration is still meters per second squared. Um, ways an object might accelerate, we'll get into more of that when we talk about uh, Newton's laws. But really, um, for this first case, when we look at projectile motion, we're almost going to treat the force of gravity as it doesn't exist. Okay? We're going to treat the effect of gravity more to be a constant acceleration, again, in the y direction. 